hot so you can yeah, this is hot, uh, so that it is visible to the all the participants but this is this is the biggest that i can make i don't know how i can make it bigger okay sir please oh. do it i think i think it's okay <laughs> okay, Let us okay no problem <laughs> okay. otherwise I'll... i I am I am sorry because when it comes to technology I in this side it it is has the entire uh a screen on my computer I don't know what is going on on the other side I have no okay. idea okay. okay we can uh, if you are using computer or laptop okay. it's okay yeah okay. this is this is this is laptop and let me see let me see you know our technology hold on so it can we make this screen bigger better than this Oh, it's full screen right there. This is full screen, right? We yeah. cannot make it better than this. Yeah. Okay, so we cannot make it better than this one. All right, okay. so let's just start. Okay. So, um, good evening, everyone. So, we will begin this session. And here, as you know, uh, Professor Ali Khani will start his session. And his topic, as you can see this uh, slide, that all dynamics of real functions and some related states. So, over to Professor Ali Asghar Ali Khani. He start his session. Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction. And sorry for being a little bit late because I run into difficulties in this site. And expected today I was a little, you know, I thought that, you know, I had command that things. It made it, you know, worse. <laughs> Yesterday that I was worried it was better. But anyway, so we want to talk about the dynamics of bare one functions and when we're going to face that. So basically, let's see what is a bare one functions. See, in undergraduate real analysis, we teach our students that if fn is x to the n on the unit interval, and when we find the limit of this function, the point-wise limit at x equal to 1, we see that the limit of x to the n is 1. And when x is between 0 and 1, the limit of when x is between 0 and 1, including 0 less than 1, the limit is 0. So we see that the sequence xn is a continuous sequence of function. However, the limit f of x is discontinuous at x equal to 1. So we know that the pointwise limit of a sequence of continuous function is not a continuous function. However, we teach our students that the uniform, and we prove it for them, that the uniform limit of a sequence of continuous function is a continuous function. Now, bare one functions basically is the limit, the pointwise limit of sequence of continuous functions. So we say a function f is a bare one function or is in the class of bare one if it is the pointwise limit of a sequence of continuous functions. And we denote the class of bare one functions by b1 and the bare one self maps of the interval i by b1 of i and i. So anytime I write b1 of i and i, we mean which most of the time today we're going to do that, we mean that our function is a bare one function from the interval i to the interval i. Okay. See, like, for example, when we are dealing, especially, you know, in applied sciences, even though that, you know, things are, uh, they're probably very smooth, and uh, we can assume the function is continuous, but we cannot be certain these days because we are running into very sophisticated functions with very sophisticated dynamics. So a little error for a continuous function could lead to really serious problems. For example, look at this easy functions, f of x equal to one minus x. So if I can get my pen, maybe I can write a little bit on this one. So this is, this function, it looks like, this function, it looks like this. Oh. So at zero is one, 
and at one is zero. Now we are changing the value at one half. See, at here, we bring it here. So this function becomes this continuous. So basically, is this easy, simple, continuous function that we have changed the value of the function only at one half. And not only becomes discontinuous, this function does not have any fixed point anymore. So it means that if we want to deal with the set of periodic points or, you know, any of those things, those properties, then we, may, we might be dealing with empty set. And we could say anything about empty set. So this is a bare one function. The moment that one point of discontinuity changes, our function is not continuous anymore, but becomes bare one. And why this is bare one is very easy because around that one half, around this one, you can pick a little bit of interval and make it like this. See, go like this. The function here, whatever it is, go like this to the one half. And then on this side, so our functions, the fn's becomes like this. And let's say you go one over and to the right and one over and to the left. And when, when n is pretty big. And then you create that sequence, which is tending toward this function point-wise. And therefore, this function becomes a sequence of uh, the, the point-wise limit of a sequence of continuous function, and therefore is bare one. So the bare one functions has been studied, you know, by the real analyst and any person who has worked in the area of real analysis or, you know, close related field, they, they know these things very well as they feel the same, comfortable with this type of function as much as they do with the con uh, class of continuous functions. Of course, any continuous function is a bare one function. As we were talking about when we were in the families of continuous function, we would say any continuously differentiable function is a, con a continuous function because that was a subclass of continuous function. So the class of continuous function is a subclass of bare one functions. And the, for example, for the characterization of the class of continuous functions, we have several characterization. One of the things that we were using is in the real line. It was that for any real R, for any real number R, the set of all x is such that f of x is less than r or f of x is bigger than r. This should be open sets. So we will say that f is continuous if and only if these two sets are open sets. For the class of bare one functions, there is a parallel result that it says that f is in bare one if and only if the set of all x is such that f of x is less than r or greater than r or f sigma set. And F sigma sets are countable union of closed sets. So similar characterization. Another characterization of the class of bare one is that any function which is bare one on any closed set or any compact set, it should have a point of relative point of continuity. And if a function has a point of continuity, relative point of continuity on any closed sets, that should be a bare one function. So that is another characterization. So therefore, we see that Y is needed to study the dynamics of bare one functions. So here, I even for like the example that I gave at the beginning is a little, you know, it was kind of easy, obvious one. But however, even if they give us any function, we could easily come up with a bear one function close by and kill the entire fixed point of the function or, you know, uh, the sets that they have well behaved. Not all sets, but the sets that they well behave, we can easily kill them. And so this is another thing. So for any F in C of I and I, which means continuous, and any epsilon positive, we can find a function in B1, bear class 1, such that the distance of f and g is less than epsilon. So it means that our function g, it is within this epsilon neighborhood of f. So it could be an approximation, and the set of fixed point of g is, is empty. And this is how we construct it. 
So first of all, we can uh, approximate our F with an F1, but we make sure that F1 is still is continuous, but is inside. The range is not, is missing the endpoints of the interval, which is MB. And then we take our G of X to be that F1 plus epsilon half characteristic function of A of X, where A is that the set of fixed point of F1. And this function, it is within the epsilon of our original F because it's within epsilon half of our F1. And the fixed point, by the way, that by adding that epsilon half characterization of A of X, we kill all the fixed point of the function. And so F of G, the set of fixed point of uh, G is empty. Okay, so that's where becomes important to study the, the dynamics of bare one. But the problems that we're going to run, let's see what kind of problems we're going to run into this kind of things. Okay. So consider the dynamical system I of F, where F is in B1 of I and I. A function, of course, is in B1 of I and I if it is the point-wise limit of a sequence of continuous function. And when E is a class of my, this, so bare one function is a class of function larger than continuous function that contains the set of continuous functions on the intervals. And when it comes to the self maps, you know, it contains that. And we are going to show that this, the sets that they could be in between, there are lots of sets of functions that we have dealt with and we are interested and they sit between in here. They, they sit in these hierarchies. And the, the dynamics of, even if we cannot study the dynamics of the entire class of bare one function, it would be interesting to know the dynamics of those subclasses, which includes the class of C of I and I. Okay? So the first thing that when we were studying the dynamics of continuous functions, we were... There were a couple of things that we were concerned. For example, we want in the continuous class of continuous functions, when we compose a continuous function with itself, we are going to get a continuous function. The iterates, so because we need the iterates of f. And when f is continuous, we don't have any problem. The iterates of a continuous function is a continuous function. The moment that our function is b1, it might not be the case anymore. As we're going to show that, is it is very easy to construct. Well, when I say is easy, easy relatively to, to a person who's in real analysis, it's very easy to construct a function which is bare one, and f o f is not bare one. Okay, so therefore that problem it will start the first. A step of the work, we would run into the problem that the iterates of a function in class E, which is a subclass of B1 of I and I, but of course is not continuous or function, it might not be, it might not stay within the class. Another thing is that another property that plays an important role in dynamical system is that when we are dealing with a sequence of functions, we want the limit. Most of the times we want to keep the limit inside the class. And for the class of continuous functions, of course, the uniform limit of continuous function was continuous. No problem at all. Fortunately, in the class of bare one functions, the same results hold. So the uniform limits of B1 functions are B1. Of course, the moment that we go to subclasses of B1, we have to be careful. For example, I'm going to mention later on what are the, some of the subclasses, but let's say, for example, one of the subclasses is the class of derivatives. Every day, see, if a function is said to be derivative, if, if it has an antiderivative, if there is the function that when you take its derivative, you're going to get, you know, that little function, f of x. And the class of derivatives, they sit... Uh, they're bigger than continuous function because any continuous function, by fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that any 
continuous function is a derivative. So it's a bigger class of continuous function, and they're sitting inside B1 of I and I. And if you take a sequence of derivatives, the limit is the uniform limit of sequence of derivatives is a derivative. So therefore, again, that some of those classes are also close and the uniform limit. And so when we talk about the uniform limit, we have to check on that as well sometimes to make sure that these properties that easily follows, easily holds for the class of continuous function, it does hold there too. And the third thing which is plays a very important role is that if a sequence fk subset of e converges to f at x, then the iterates of that sequence, which is fkn of x, for any n, n1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, for all of those things up to infinity, for all of those things, it goes to the fn of x. So this is another thing, and this is the one that sometimes it forces, you know, like, for example, the equi continuity comes to play when we were dealing, you know, with nicer behaviors and those things. So these are the things that are sitting behind the scene, and they have effect if they do not, uh, if our class of function does not have those properties, therefore, we might run into some difficulties, okay? So the uniform limit of bare one is a bare one, the sequence of bare one functions bare one, so that's not a problem. The, the composition of a bare one function with itself, it is not, a, it might not be a bare one, so that is, the, we, we might have a problem there. And a sequence of, this sequence, let's go even to the class of continuous function. So if we say that if we have a sequence which is continuous, a sequence of continuous functions. And if that sequence pointwise converges to f, it means that rf might not be continuous. It might be a bare one function. Then can we say that the limit as k goes toward infinity of k, f k n of x is equal to f n of x for all x and for all n? Can we say that or not? And we're going to see that in fact, even for the class of continuous function, if they do not stay, if it is not uniform, it, it is not the case. We're going to see that. Okay? So, for example, look at this function which is sitting at the bottom. I'm going to go back to the top later on. Look at this function that's sitting at the bottom. If I, if Q, Qn, n from 1 to infinity, is an enumeration of the rationals. So we have an enumeration of rationals. And I'm going to make the first one, I'm going to put one. First rationals, I'm, I'm going to, the functions that I make, I stay in unit interval because any other intervals we can imitate, do the same thing. So let Q be Qn, the enumeration of the rationals in the unit interval. And Q1 be the one. So one is the first one. And the rest of them, by any ways, by any method, you know, we have enumerate them. And then take our function f of x. A square root of 2 over m plus 1 when x is qn and x is not 0. And let's take 0 to 1 and all the irrational numbers to 0. Of course, this function, because has countably Another fact is that if a, if a function has countably many points of discontinuities, it has to be B1. So this function, when we look at it, we see that it is continuous at the irrationals, and the only points that it, it might not be continuous is at the rationals. And therefore, the point of discontinuity is countable. So this function is his bare one. Of course, because it's from unit interval to unit interval is bounded bare one. Okay? And but however, if you find f2, f or f of this function, you see that that function takes the set of irrationals. F f is gonna take the irrationals to zero, and then it's gonna go the f the second the second time when f if x takes that zero to one. So, and they're f1, the irrationals, they go to 1. 
and the rationals which are listed at the first branch they go to a square root of 2 over some n plus 1 which is an irrational number and the second f is going to take it to 0 so the rationals they go to 0 the irrationals they go to 1 this function is known to be called directly function and it is a bear two function is not a bear one functions by the way bear two functions are point wise limits of the class of bear one functions so it's even a class bigger than that and this hierarchy goes on so therefore we see that this is an example of a function which is bear one however f2 is not bear one and the moment that f2 is not bear one f3 is going to switch it is zero one between the rationals and irrationals f3 becomes like for example instead of being one for f2 now becomes zero for at the irrationals and at the rationals instead of being one uh instead of being zero it is becomes one so it switches so it still is going to stay b2 and not be uh, being b1 so all those fn when n is greater than or equal to two is not b1 so these are the type of problems that we run at the beginning okay so the question some mathematicians not because of the dynamical systems because of their you know as a real analyst they have been concerned about what group of functions what subclasses of functions subclasses of bare one functions are closed and their compositions and those groups of functions are good for us because when we want to talk about the dynamics at least we know we, we are certain that we are not going to run into any difficulties because they're going to fall out of our class and then we might have you know say things that is irrelevant okay okay let's see what was in the top if i missed anything okay now for the class of c of i and i see those three conditions that i said c1 the class of continuous functions of course they were closed and the composition no problem uniform limit of sequence of continuous function is continuous no problem we said that the third condition is not satisfied so we have a sequence of continuous functions that pointwise goes to a function however the iterates of that those sequence is not going to go to the iterates of f and let's see have can we you know come up with that okay so so this is an example that uh it is in uh, my paper in topology and applications and there exists a sequence fm uh that converges uniformly to a function f on the unit interval however the sequence fmk does not converge so, so this is uniform this is more difficult and because even the uniform it doesn't work this is a more sophisticated function but but for the but for the continuous functions it is easier if for the point wise it is easier why look in here here we can answer the question even here we can answer the question see this function it is not this the f that we have this is bare one it is bare one so there since it is bare one is the point wise limit of a sequence of continuous functions right so because it's bare one so we have a sequence of continuous functions that point wise converges to this f now look at the iterates of those sequence of let for example look at the second iterates of that sequence that becomes because the composition of continuous function with itself is continuous so that the iterates the second iterates of that sequence becomes a sequence of continuous functions <clears throat> and if that point wise converges to f2 it means our f2 should be b1 because our f2 becomes a point wise limit of a sequence of continuous function so it has to be b1 and here we showed that that function is not b1 so for the class of continuous function and pointwise it is very easy to constantly see that that even this example shows that we cannot have a sequence of continuous functions going toward f 
and the iterates of that sequence function going toward f of x, f, 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 n of x pointwise. However, the more uniform is more difficult because lots of things that it doesn't work pointwise, <coughs> excuse me, it works under uniform convergence. So here we give a, a, a sequence fm, a bounded bare one, which converts uniformly to the function f on the unit inner wall. However, the sequence fm, fmk, m from one to infinity uh, for each k does not converge uniformly to the fk. Okay? And this is how it is. So, so the idea is pretty much, you know, similar to what, you know, we were doing a little bit as we had to modify it. So again, we're taking Q to be the set of rational numbers in zero one. And we take one over i's among those rationals that we have one over i, if all those numbers that are like one half, one third, one fourth, and so on, we put those things in a set A, and zero and one, I put them in set B, and the rest of them, I enumerate them as Ri, which is I from one to infinity, and then I take my, define my Fm to be one over n plus one, if x is Rn, and n is less than or equal to m, and at zero and one, I define it to be one minus x, and then, but the rest of the points, we define it to be zero. So each one of these fm, they have finitely many points of discontinuity, and therefore, they are bare ones. And so these are bounded bare ones because they go from unit interval to unit interval. So, and if we take the limit as n goes toward infinity, see, m goes toward infinity, so this becomes, those are n's, they becomes all of it. R1, R2, so basically covers every element in Ri, I from 1 to infinity. So our f of x becomes 1 over m plus 1 if x is in Rn, and 1 minus x, the rest. So we see that the difference between fm and f is basically 1 over n plus 1 when n is bigger than m. So it's less than or equal to 1 over n plus 1. And as m goes toward infinity, this number becomes, the norm becomes less than any epsilon. So the, the convergence is uniform. However, when we look at fmk, we see that fmks are in bounded bare one. And fk, as this is very similar to what we had before. If you, if you write fk, again, you see that f2 and up, it is in bare two and not in bare one. So it becomes, again, that directly function is going to come and play. So that's not, and we're going to say that why, why it is not. So it's, it might not be exactly the directly function, but pretty much that is going to come and play. So that does not converge uniformly to FK. <coughs> so now look at, so the class is that E that I was saying that the, the class of E, which is contains the class of continuous function and is a subset of bare class one. There are lots of class of functions that we are very concerned, especially, you know, some of them concerned, but you know, lots of other mathematicians, but some of these things, they're concerned, you know, the real analysts are very much concerned about it. For example, A of I and I, the class of approximately continuous self maps of the interval. So this is a class of functions containing the all every single continuous functions is more than that, and it sits within the class of bare one functions. As I said before, the class of derivatives of the, the derivatives. So delta of i and i is the class of derivatives, self maps of i. They sit that those are contained, this class contains the class of continuous function, and it sits within the class of bare one functions. Darbu bare one functions. Darbu is the same as intermediate value properties. See, a function, a continuous function has intermediate value properties. It means that any values between f of a and b, if c is sitting between f of a and f of b, 
there is a point x0 between a and b such that f of x0 is equal to c so darbu bervan functions are those functions that they have the intermediate value property and they are bare one so this class of course contains the class of you know class of continuous functions and sits within the the class of bare one functions upper semi-continuous functions lower semi-continuous functions the class of upper semi-continuous functions lower semi-continuous functions the class of bounded variations the class of functions these all they contain the all continuous functions and they sit within the class of bare one functions so it's studying and this is their hierarchies see the continuous function is sitting inside bounded approximate the continuous function is sitting and the reason that i'm sticking to the bounded ones because if we want to define the soup norm to make it a metric space, I need that boundedness. So C is subset of bounded approximately continuous function, and that is sitting inside bounded derivatives, and that is sitting inside bounded Darbu bare one functions, and that is sitting inside bounded bare one functions. Okay, so these are some of these classes, and all these bounded ones that I wrote in here include that includes c which is c of i and i with the soup norm they form a metric space and therefore we can talk about the properties in terms of you know like topology whether they have some some properties in terms of topology or not for example we can consider if something uh, typically holds there yesterday we were talking about typical property see typical property Let's let's make it non mathematical. Let's be a little bit, you know, less uh, act like a real analyst. And a typical property is like something that is, you know, like for example, we look at a society <clears throat> and we see that the typical person in that society, it means randomly, if you pick, you're gonna pick one of those. There are so many of them around that you pick that. And for example, it is uh, it wears black color. Let's say that, okay, or it means, you know, a yellow shirt. So a typical, when we say typical, typical property, it means as long as we're talking in the sense of category, they are plenty of the elements of our set. They are, they, they have that property, okay? So it's like, that's why we, we were saying that among the continuous functions, if you, uh, let's say we have a bag that it is full of continuous functions. Of course, this is not, you know, like mathematically, this is not insane. But let's say that, and we put our head in the, hand in there and take a function out, it's nowhere differentiable function. It's nowhere monotone function. So all those nice properties that we say, it might not be in there. So this is, when, when we are dealing with metric spaces, so we can talk about <coughs> the generic properties or typical properties so we can say that okay we might not all of our functions might not have that property but typically they might have it means that most of them as far as category is concerned it it has it has that property and even that is important for us because then we know that most are you know they have that property regarding of the bare one functions there the research is very at the beginning there has not been in last, I would say, 20 years. Some papers has been published. And the reason that it and the reason that it is there are not that many papers, because there is not much tools to work in it. If the people that are familiar with the continuous dynamical system, they know that, especially on the intervals, they know that one of the things that plays an important role is the intermediate value property another thing that plays an important role is that the continuous image of a set a connected set is a connected set and in most of the times because we're dealing with intervals the connected the continuous and uh the continuous image of an interval is an interval because interval is connected so the continuous becomes an interval. So that 
those concepts, they play a very important role. Where when the moment that we come to the, where one functions, we might not have that, unless we go to Darbu where one, then we have that intermediate value property there. And, but it's still the connectivity is not there. So the type of questions that the people they have tried, you know, they have, they have attacked, they have, to, they have tried to stay within the class of Darbu Verman and look at those functions that they have, gee, like the certain type of graphs. So that connectivity is going to come and play. And in that regard, these are the list of papers that I put it in here. Doesn't mean that it covers everything. But for example, the Sharkovsky theorem, that important theorem, that it, it was the center a stone of some of those things in, in at the beginning of uh, the research in, in a continuous dynamical system, it does hold for the connectivity G delta relations, which it means that, you know, like it has, there is some sort of connectivity is going to come and play, and these functions, they have good properties. And other things, iterates of almost continuous functions and Sarkovsky's theorem. So this is another thing. So it means that when we are dealing with that, <coughs> then, excuse me. So therefore, uh, we have, uh, we, we can have some sort of that. Uh, and that Kanyas and Zuka and Pawlak's problems concerning entropy of almost continuous functions. So they have talked about that. They have at least investigated some of these things and loops of intervals and Darbu bear one functions. So these are, they have tried to imitate some of the results there and see if they can generalize and they can get something in this setting. And they have been successful to, to a certain extent in some of this, for some of this class of functions, even though that it still is at the very beginning. Now, let's go to the problems of the composition and classifying the subclass of bear one, such that the compositions of F and G becomes bear one. So this is, this problem was, have been studied at a function G is called right B1 compositor. If F or G equal B is B1 for any F is in B1. And it's called left B1 compositor. If G or F is in B1 for any F is in B1. Okay, for example, if G is a continuous function, is left and right B1 compositor because the composition of a continuous function and B1 is B1. So, but in general, we want to see what this is. So, first of all, it turns out that the left, the left bear one compositors are continuous functions. So the moment that we want to have the left compositor, so if we want to put it from the left, compose it from the left, and it should work for every bare one function, it forces our function to be continuous. Why? Look at here, this. So if we take our Q, again, to be Qn and enumeration of rationals, and define our F as this one. Okay, suppose that our F has... Suppose that there is one point that our G has discontinuity. So let's say at zero, X zero is discontinuous because since it is discontinuous, we have a sequence Xn that goes towards zero and G of Xn minus G of X zero is greater than some epsilon, greater than zero for every N. Now that we have this one, I, I will enumerate those uh, QNs and I, I, I define my function f as when x is qn, okay, and qn comes out of that q. So I define it to be f of x to be xn. And for the rest of the points, I define it to be x0. So this function, because has countably many points of discontinuities, of course, is a bare one function. And now if I look at the gof, See, when you look at the G O F, the G that I had, and here, because of, you know, I picked on those X N, which it creates the, this, you know, the, it creates the problem of the discontinuity at X zero, my, my G O F 
becomes a function which is not in B1, and therefore it is not because it's discontinuous everywhere. That GOF becomes discontinuous everywhere, so it is not bare one. We said that bare one functions should be continuous on every, they should have a relative point of continuity on every closed set. They should have a relative point of continuity on every open set. So if we pick any interval, closed interval, there should ha it should have a relative point of continuity there. And this function is discontinuous everywhere. GOF is continu discontinuous everywhere. So it's not B1. So that is, it looks that, okay, we're done. Because, you know, the GOF, the left, the side compositors, are the continuous functions. However, for the iteration, we need FOF. We don't want for all functions to be, you know, to stay within the class. We want the iterates to stay in the class. So there, if it is right compositor, instead of writing FOF, FOF on the other side, the same thing. So therefore, we're gonna look at the right compositor and see what is the right compositors. Okay, the right compositor Zhao and Susha, uh, Zhao in the Susha Journal of Math in 2007, uh, he, he brings these three things that F is B1 compositor, and for any closed subset of A, a closed subset A of the interval I, F inverse of A is an F sigma set, and for any F sigma set A, F inverse of A is an F sigma set. So these are going from two to three is, you know, that's not that difficult. Anyway, this is, at least it, it gives a characterization of the right B1 compositor. And the fourth, which is the most important one, is that for any B1 function, epsilon, from I to R plus, there is a positive function delta from I to R plus, such that if X minus Y, is less than minimum of delta x and delta y, then the absolute value of f of x minus f of y is less than the minimum of the epsilon of f of x and f of epsilon of f of y. Epsilon is that positive functions going from i to the, to the r plus. And so it turns out, and this is later on, Finesius and Cabral and they, they showed in the Indonesian Master Vast Journal, they talked about K continuous functions. K continuous functions is exactly like what we have in the fourth for any B1 functions, instead of B1 functions for any positive epsilon function. So that B1 drops that B1, there is a positive function delta, such that if that is less than minimum of delta X and delta Y, then f of x minus f of y is less than the minimum of epsilon of f of x and epsilon of f of y. So those are called k continuous functions. And it turns out that those are exactly the right B1 compositor functions. So those are the right ones. So if we want for the iterates to work on the iterates of continuous function, I mean, bare one functions, we have to stay within this class. So it means that as long as we stay within the bare one functions that are K continuous, it means they have that property, we're good. And so we're not gonna, the, the iterates are going to stay inside the class and we're not gonna have difficulties. Okay, up to here, is there any questions, anything that you guys wanna ask, then, then we're gonna go, any question? Sir, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, why it is called K continuous? Because uh, there is no term like K here. So why well, it is called is, K continuous? I, I, I don't know. And the reason is that these guys, they called it K continuous. And, uh, and, and I, I honestly, I think they should have called it composite continuous. Yes, because it turns is. out later on that this is a countable union of, you can write your set as countable union of inner walls that, uh, I mean, countable union of closed sets such that your F is continuous on those sets. So composite or 
سیگما کنتینوس وود هاف مید مور سنس بات پروبابلی ات دی تایم دی هاد تو کال ایت ا نیم اند ایت ایز سم اف دی سینگز دت ایز نون ناو ایت واز نات نون دتس وای دی کال ایت کی کنتینوس نو نو علی ای ای یو ای ایم سوری یور کوشن یو شور اف کورس تانک یو گو ایز دت دت اورینگم سیز دت یور دلتا your delta is a function not a real number yes. right oh, oh. yes it is lemma, a function yeah there is a lemma due to cousin for okay. every positive function delta you find oh. a delta fine partition of the interval and that right, is why right. that, that is why uzai uzai and they make this sense for the Hinstock Kuzal integration, and oh, that okay. makes an that makes an interval due to Kuzal k k k continuous. Oh, because your delta Kuzai, your, your delta your delta is not a real number. It is a function. No, no, it's a function. Yes, yes. That that is why you find uh, right. how, what is the guarantee that you will get a partition because oh, you right. take an interval. That is why Kuzin says that there is oh. for corresponding to delta there is a delta fine point. Oh. Okay. okay. Uh, thank, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, continue. Okay. So this, this see the delta quantization that the professor Ganguly was talking about. That is so for any positive functions, we can have that delta decomposition, and we have used, for example, if you go to my pad derivative papers, I have used a lot, and Dr. Brock, the professor Brock, then uses it, and 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 Thompson and O'Malley, they use it in their pad derivative papers. they use a lot so any time we deal with bare one functions that composition becomes very handy and the composition becomes very handy that's why i thought that you know the sigma continuous would have been a better note but but i didn't know the the history that professor ganguly brought and from the integration theory and that is why it is called k continuous okay so that thank you very much i really appreciate it professor ganguly as i said as always you come to the help when is needed that's thank you all right so this is so the k continuous the only difference is that at b1 that b1 conditions that put it for epsilon is not a necessary conditions you can they they showed it in this paper that you can drop that and that's why it's called that okay and so let me see what is my time because all right So here Brockner Petrushka they wrote a paper very interesting paper and they started you know which is in Actamat hunger and in there they are looking at the inverse image of f inverse of y the eleven sets of a bare one functions and it turns out that with any properties that is you know it works for the level set somehow it works you know it has is closely related to the dynamics of those functions and this that's why this became the initial of the research that some of the papers that recently th has published myself and it is this is th steely has published or myself and this are because this what 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 they are doing in that paper that is basically like typical properties it means most functions are bare one functions in terms of level sets they have that properties and and it works what they have it works for you know most of the subclasses that they have for example for the elements of a residual g delta in each of bounded approximately bounded derivatives bounded darbu bare one and bounded bare one the level set f inverse of y is nowhere well dense for each y in the range of f and let me be an arbitrary continuous borel measure on 0 1 then all f in bounded bare one mu of f inverse of y is 0 for every y in the range of f and this is this is residual also so that gives about the size of f inverse of y and this kind of results are interrelated with the periodic points the uh, and those things the set of fixed points periodic points you know like recurrent points all those kind of things because those are the ones that it has something to do with the range and 
<coughs> that is the beginning of some of these research on bounded bear one functions. And so, so the question that we can ask, do typically element of bounded bear one functions have a small set of fixed point, periodic point, etc. In some sense, for example, in the sense of cardinality, category, measure, host of dimension, whatever. Okay, any any notion that indicates the size of you know something, concepts in, in, in the topology or in cardinality or whatever. So we can ask here. Is it true that f inverse of A is a small in some sense? Or mu of f inverse of closure of A is a small, where A is one of these sets, f of f, p of f, r of f, omega of f, which is the set of non-wandering, and, you know, recurrent points, r of f is recurrent points, and so on. And one thing that TH Steely was able to show is that that is true that F for we have functions in bare class one are not closed and their composition, but typically are. So for a typical F in B1 of I and I, if N is in B1 for N greater than or equal to one, it means that as far as we are looking in the sense of category, so if our notion of a small and big is first category is a small, the complement, which is residual, is big. So most of bare one functions, they fall in there, in the big one. So it means that f being in B1 of i and i, fn is in B1 for all n greater than or equal to 1. They also show, he also showed that if x is in i, omega of x and f is contained in the collection of points at which f is continuous. And f from lambda of f, which is this omega limit set of f, to the omega limit set of f, is the bijection. is 1, 1, and on 2. So in another paper, he showed the, the, the follow. These are the following results. And for typical f in b1 of i, i, i and i, the lambda set, the lambda of f, the, the omega limit set is a nowhere dense and perfect subset of i with Hausdorff dimension zero. These are very similar to the ones that we had for continuous functions, okay? And keep in mind, the results that we have for continuous function, it might not be correct here, even typically here. Why? Because the class of continuous functions is a first category inside, is it, you know, is a closed over dense part of the class of the bare one functions. So themselves in bare one functions are considered very small in terms of category. So a property could be there, it could hold there, but now it doesn't go to the bare one typically because in, in the continuous functions is where it holds and it doesn't hold outside. Okay, because that is a, you know, uh, because we ignore all those first category sets. And the collection Omega of f, where f is b1 and i and i, is closed in the Hausdorff metric space. So this is the, the theorem that the Brockners and those things they had for the continuous functions. This is for the bare one functions. If x is a point of continuity of f, then x and f is a point of continuity of x and f going to omega of x and f. So here he has looked at m times b1 of i and i, I mean i times b1 of i and i, and then looks at these things, which is very similar to what, you know, they were looking at it, and this becomes can, the, at the point of continuity of those bare one. So it did become similar to, to what they were trying to look at, the omega being continuous, but he has, you know, himself, he has, he, he was forced to to stick to the point of continuity and because there was no control outside that. And for typical f and b1 and i and i, the function fn is bounded b1, as I said it before. This, is, this means that typically bare one functions have bare one iterations. And on chain recurrent set b1 of i and i, it, this is my paper. There, I have given lots of results that I've shown that in that some of these 
you know, some of these sets could be, in some of these senses, very small. In some other sense, could be big. And, for example, if mu is an arbitrary Borel measure and delta is positive, then the set E1 of mu and delta, all those F is in bounded bare, bare ones, such that the mu of the closure of the chain recurrent point of F being bigger than or the called delta is uniformly closed. Because I was trying to see categorically if, you know, if something is happens or not. So those things that the moment I need closeness to see if it is, you know, like nowhere dense and I is, you know, we can get rid of those. We can ignore those. And let mu be an arbitrary Borel measure and delta positive. Then the set of all those E1 of mu and delta such that, which is equal to all F in bounded bare one, such that mu of the closure of CR of F greater than or equal to delta is a nowhere dense set. That's because we need that closeness and then showing that this is nowhere dense set. Okay. Are you, it yes. will be the regular Borel measure, I think so. Are you, are yeah, that is. That is that is that that is continuous Borel that can, the continuous Borel measure. But you are not taking the any arbitrary or regular Borel measure. I think. Yeah, no, no, no. This is regular arbitrary Borel measure, which is you know like that continued. Yes, continuity. We use that. Yeah, I think it should be regularity. Regularity property should be. Yes, yes. We know. We use we use the regular. That that is what yeah, is defined uh, in the paper so. as. Yeah, it, it, it yeah. should be regular. Yeah, because we, we we define the Borel measure there as the infimum of those mu of the open ones containing the set, which that is that that ha that's how it's defined. So I I yeah may, maybe that is mistake, but I I doubt it. It's it might work for uh, but but that's how it is defined. The, the the but we use the continuity. The continuity is used definitely. I know that. So that may be that arbitrary is, you know, should be continuous Borel measure, I think. Anyway, so there exists, and so look at, look at this function, for example. F of X, see, for the country class of continuous functions, the set of chain recurrent sets of the function, which is where sitting in my hierarchies, they were sitting at the top. They were all closed sets. Now here, look at this function, which is in B1. This is our f of x is in B1. But if we look at the chain recurrent points, see all those points that they are between 0 to 1 fourth. Their f is 0, and it's going to stay at 0, because f of 0 is 0, and it's going to stay at 0, and it's not going to. So if x is not 0, it never gets back close to the x anymore. We cannot chain it to the x via an epsilon chain. On the other hand, if x is between 1 fourth and 3 fourth, f of x is always is x. So the x is with any epsilon, you can chain it to itself. No problem at all. And if x is between, between 3 fourth and 1, see all those x goes toward 1, and then f of 1 is 1. It's going to stay there. So we see that the set of chain recurrent points of f, it is the interval 1 fourth and Three fourth, which is all fixed point, and including, and you have to add zero and one to that. And this set is not closed. So, so for bare one function, we cannot expect the set of chain recurrent functions to be closed. However, here I have shown that in that paper, I've shown that for the if I take all those. F's in bounded bare one such that the closure of the chain recurrent sets is the chain recurrent set. In another word, chain recurrent sets are closed. This is residual in bounded bare one. It means this is a complement, this is the complement of the first category set. That means typically or generically, elements of bounded bare one have closed chain recurrent sets. So that is true that all of them do not have, but majority of them, as far as the category is concerned, do have that property, okay? And so this is another one, mu be in the Borel measure, then the set of all those f in such that the mu of the chain recurrent put is zero, is residual. So they have Borel measure zero as, you know, those things. And so... The closure is as measure zero also. 
So because of these are typically they are the same. So because the intersection of two residual is residual. So if we have two typical properties, you can take the intersection and you can say that typically that property holds as well. Okay. <clears throat> now, this is something that is very important. A paper that was published in Proceedings of AMS in uh, 2001. In this paper, the authors, they gave an epsilon delta definition for the class of bare one. See, we have epsilon delta definition for the class of continuous function. For example, we say that for any epsilon, there is a delta of x such that when y minus x is less than delta of x, f of y minus f of x is less than epsilon. So here they gave a definition in terms of delta epsilon for the class of bare one, and they gave this equivalent that f is in bare one, if and only if for every epsilon positive, there exists a sequence, there exists a function delta epsilon, which it depends on f from x to the r plus, such that when x and y are in x, and row one of x and y is the less than the minimum of delta of x, delta epsilon of x and delta epsilon of y, then row of f of x and row 2 of f of x and y is less than epsilon. So they gave, and they proved this one in metric spaces, uh, in completely separable metric spaces. These two are equal. So this is epsilon definition. Up to this point, there was, even so, this is so clear, but it didn't exist, this epsilon definition, because for continuous functions, we can write minimum of delta x and delta y, and that would have worked. And here for the continuous function. So if you look at it that way, this becomes a generalization of that one, and that is for the bare one functions. Okay, now let's go back to the theorem of Brockner and see there. See, for the continuous functions, for the class of continuous functions, these were equivalent. Omega of f is continuous. Fn, the class of Fn is equal continuous. Omega f2 is continuous, fixed point of f2, and all those kind of things, which is, we have less that here, these are equivalent. But I'm concerned about two of these things. See, omega of f being continuous, one and two. And the iterates of fn, the family of iterates of fn being equi continuous. So the question is that, what can be substituted for equi continuity in the class of equi in the class of uh, bare one functions. And this equal continuity as uh, most of you know, as, as every, all, all of you know, go, go, you know, you know that equal continuity is a well-established concept in functional spaces. And the concept of equal continuity, in fact, independently was introduced by Arzela and Ascoli in trying to obtain a result similar to Bolzano Weierstrass theorem, which it says that any bounded sequence has a convergence subsequence. So, if for the function spaces, so they wanted to show that if you have a sequence in function spaces, they have convergence subsequences. That's why the equal continuity was introduced and, and plays the, the concepts of compactness plays an important role in function space theory, and it turns out that, you know, equal continuity and compactness, they are interrelated, okay? So our scholar's theorem states that equal continuity can be regarded as characterization of compactness of subsets of function spaces. So that was the idea, but it turns out that in dynamical system, the equal continuity of iterates is very important. In another form, the compactness, the, the connectedness, all those things that we take it for granted for the real line, it's is needed and it, it, it's it's coming to play there. Okay, now look here in this paper, which I call it, which is called XYB1 family of functions on metric spaces, a generalization of XY continuity, which is published in topology applications. We gave we defined the XYB1 property of families of functions. 
See x. Let's, for example, if we take x and row one and x and row two, two metric spaces, and f, a family of functions from x to y, we say that f is x y bare one. If for every epsilon there is a function delta from x to r plus, such that for all x and y in x, row two of f of x and y is less than epsilon for all f in f. If row one of x and y is less than minimum of delta x and delta y. So this is basically natural generalization of equi continuity. The moment that we have that epsilon def delta definition for the bare one function. And I was surprised that why it was not looked because that paper was I had was written in 2001. It has been looking by it has been under investigation and you know cons considered by many mathematicians, including myself. And we had not, I hadn't even looked at it, and I had not seen, and that is gives a you know the equi beer one, which is the generalization of that. Okay. Of course, the equi continuity now, any sequence of functions or any families of functions that are equi continuous, they are equi bear one as okay, they are equi bear one as well. So the equi continuity of iterates of a continuous function f and the continuity of the map x going to omega of f. This is closely related. This is what Brackner and Cedar were considering and introduced their chaos in this term. So it would be interesting to know if there is any relation between the equi bear one proper of iterates of f and the chaotic behavior of a bear class one function. Maybe a point for defining the, the chaotic behavior for bare one functions is that saying that, okay, if this omega of, that takes x to omega of x and f not being bare one, as Brockner and Cedar did in their thing. It turns out that similar to the class of uh, Equi continuous, the, those class of functions, the functions that they have equi continuous iterates, then omega of f is bare one. It turns out that when they have, uh, when this is equi bare one, it is also omega of f is bare one. And so here, this is a handy theorem that when we have two completely separable metric spaces, then the following statements are equivalent. If we have a family inside B1 of X and Y, this is equi bare one. If and only if for every epsilon positive, there is a sequence of closed sets Xi, I from one to infinity, such that X is union I of I from one to infinity of Xi, and the oscillation of F on each one of these Xi's, I from one to infinity, is less than epsilon. So F cannot oscillate. So this is like that delta decomposition that we were talking about for functions of Erman. This is exactly the same thing. And so it means that, and that should happen for every single function in the family. Okay. And so the question is that, what can we say? Is every continuous function, for example, if I take a function of a family of continuous functions, so is it equi bare one or not? Or uh, do we have a families of equi bare one, which is not equi continuous? And, and those things. So there are lots of questions that we could ask. And here there is an example that I've shown that there exists a family F subset of C1 of I and I. So they're continuously differentiable, but they're not equi B1. And the, this is the FI that I have taken. Basically, you know, like at, I have enumerated the intervals with rational endpoint. And on that interval, see, at less than AIs, I take my function to be one. If by beyond BIs, I take it to be zero. And in a continuous and uh, differentiable form, I connect those ends. So it comes like, you know, one and then goes down and then goes zero. And this is all those FIs. And then I throw all these things, which is a countable family. I throw them in F. 
So this becomes a family inside C1 of I and I. And this is not X by B1 because when I, when I look at that decomposition, so because if I take my epsilon to be between 0 and 1, and I look at that decomposition Xi, 0 equal to union of all these Xi's, which these Xi's are closed, by bare category theorem, one of those Xi's should have an interval in it. And inside that interval, I should have one of these rational endpoints intervals. And one of these Fi's in there. So therefore, uh, Fi of x in for x and y in that set, the oscillation becomes 1, which is bigger than my epsilon. And therefore, by that theorem, it cannot be xy bare 1. This is theorem sitting above. Cannot be xy bare 1. Another thing is that we show that there exists a family F in C of I and I that is xy bare 1, but is not xy continuous. So xy bare 1 family is bigger than xy continuous family. And this is, I have, this is an example of gk of x is k square of x, 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1 over k, and 1 over x when x is that, and this is not, of course, this is the known to the communities, uh, most mathematicians, that this is a family which is not equal continuous. However, we can show that this is not equal B1. And the proof of equal B1, it requires a little bit of work, but it's not, it's all, you know, basic mathematics, and we can show that this is not equal B1. Okay, another property is that the XY B1 they have is like pretty much similar to XY continuous function. So if you have a families of XY B1, the soup of that family, it should be inside. It should be, if, if I add the soup and inf of the family to the family, it still stays XY B1. Okay, and because, so another thing is that if we pick any finite family, finite family of bare ones. So if I pick like a family, a set that has three or four functions of bare one, that family is also an XY bare one. Because all you have to do among those deltas, they have that they're finitely many of them, take the minimum, and that is going to give you the delta for that decomposition theorem that I put it up there. Okay? And let X and row 1 and row 2 be two compact metric spaces. If Fn is a sequence of bare 1 functions that converges uniformly to F, then those that sequence is also an xy bare 1 family. So the moment that we know a sequence is uniformly convergence becomes xy bare 1 family. Okay? And, and the question is that let fm from m1 to infinity be a sequence of bare 1 functions such that for each m, the family fmk is xy bare 1. Is fk an xy bare 1 family if the sequence fm converges uniformly to f? So if we have a sequence that we know that fm, a sequence of bare 1 functions, that for all case, fmk is xy bare 1, and Fk now and Fmk, Fm and Fm goes uniformly to F. Can we say that Fk is xy bare one? And the answer to this one is no. I have constructed in the paper there is construction of these things, but okay. And one thing that anytime we want to carry the xy bare oneness, we need something that is called orbitary. Uh, orbitally xy bare 1, and that is how it is defined here. f from x to r is the bare 1 function. If the iterates of f, the iterates of f, we say f is orbitally xy bare 1, if the iterates of f is an xy bare 1 family, okay? And some some people, if you know, like, so you could say that f is xy bare 1, but, but you mean by f, is means fn for all of them. So this is a better way to say that. Okay, so this is, we say F is orbitally, if 
all the iterates of f that we put through them in a family and that is pair one functions okay and it turns out that when we have x and rho be a metric space f be a bare one functions if f is orbitally equi bare one at x with a lower semi-continuous delta see keep in mind that for any f we have a delta epsilon and f for and any epsilon and our f we have a delta epsilon and f and if we put the conditions that this is lower semi-continuous okay those deltas they are lower semi-continuous it shows that when x is in the omega of f and y which is the omega limit sets of f uh, of y and their f then f is orbitrally xy b1 at y so that therefore it gives some dynamics it gives basically you know this, this a little information about the dynamics of f the xy bear one so it still is too far from what we were you know what what it is you know like in brockner's and those things it's there is a lot of work to be you know to get there and if if it is possible but at least it shows that these are these ideas are playing an important roles in the dynamics of bare one functions okay so this is basically that examples that it shows that that is the case let me see where we are so i have to yeah i'm gonna so this is the example is sitting right here and i have given that example and that's it so i'm going to stop my talk here i'm going to answer the questions but that example is sitting at the very end that it gives you that sequence fn that converges uniformly to a function f and f and m for each of these fn's is x by bare one but the fm they are not equi the family of fm are not equi bare one okay so that is we have given it here okay so i'm gonna stop here because we need another 10 minutes or whatever you know we have only yeah to answer the questions or anything so is there any questions anything you know i'm, I'm done yes there is any question then participant can raise the hand or somehow ask the question uh, and i have question but somebody sure. I, I i want to invite from the participant if they have any question then i will tell i last i am the last man is there any question from the participant I don't think so. Uh, then, sir, please, uh, you may ask the question. Koshik, you have question? Bablu, no. you have question? Bablu? No, sir. No, sir. No, it is not a question. Uh, Ali, it is a friendly Go discussion. Ahead. It, it is ahead. not a question. Don't think it Go is ahead. a question. It is a friendly discussion. Okay. That is, I, I, I think the, uh, the class of approximately continuous function is a bounded class of approximately continuous function is a subclass of the w bear one right yes yes it but is. you but you put the subclass of bounded w bear one why you put bounded no the bounded because we are inside well, interval well, and f it should be self it should go from i to i so yeah, the range is also subset of, so automatically becomes bounded that's yeah. one thing and and another the reason that I put it inside there, because when you want to put the soup norm to make it a company, to make it a metric space, you need the boundedness. Yeah, if you take an interval, I am talking about it. Yes. If you take an interval, you don't need the boundedness. No, no, no. For the interval, we do not. For the interval, yeah, we yeah. do not. But keep yeah, in mind but, that yeah, these things when we have been space, discussing, yes, when we have been discussing, these things sometimes we jump yeah, from that, interval that, that to metric and those things so it is you know like that's why we have to put it in there 
So it is redundant. Yes, you are correct that for interval is redundant and is need is not need not to be there. Right. Uh, right. And another question: There is a sure. steel because steel is very uh, wrote many paper in real exchange. Uh, I think he is right now in the one, one of the university. But is he wrote YouTube? a yeah. Uh, yeah, I know that. Uh, he wrote a paper on Paula. The Pavlak, I think so, it is work on the Darbu Baron function. So, uh, it, what, uh, he, he wrote the paper on what? He wrote a paper on Pavlak or, uh, oh no, no Natkan, Natkan, Natkan. Natkan is, Natkan is, Natkan, yes. yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes. Natkani, he, he is my friend. And Natkani, yes. uh, you know the Natkani, you also Of course, he's my friend too, of course, he's my friend too, go ahead. He's friend. He, he, yes. he wrote a paper on Pavlak. I think that yes. Paula has most of the work on the Darbu Baron function. Yes. That is a dynamic. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Darbu Baron. I, I think the Baron function is very OLBF function, right? But right, uh, right. But Darbu is not OLBF. That is why to make it OLBF, I make Darbu Baron, right? Right, right. In fact, in fact, that's why that's what I was telling that the intermediate value theorem it plays so much important role in the continuous yeah, case. Yeah. So that's why we have to go to Darbu, or for example, derivatives class that has the Darbu properties and some of some of those things. So we have to stay within the Darbu class if we yeah. want to get something. You know, some of these things doesn't mean that still we get results, but at least we have our life is a little easier. But 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 have you done any things on the uh, dynamics of Darbu Baron function? Well, I've been working on that. Yeah. Do I have, have I published anything in there? Not. But no. I have worked on those things, and I have some of the things, and I have read all those papers in that areas, and I'm following. In fact, I had a communication. After this paper appeared about a year ago, I had communication from Zuka, which is, you know, they uh, work Zuka, closely Zuka. with, yeah, which wo works closely, Piotr, which is works closely with Nat Nat Kanich. It's that he has results that, you know, like XY bear one. If, if a family of, if a sequence of functions is XY bear one, it has a subsequence which is convergent. Yeah, so it right. is. So it, yeah. he he has a result of in that in that sort. It means that so that is something that it was so natural to expect, but he says that you know like he has a result at, at something like that, and and he had you know, uh, I I've seen the sketch of that. Uh, another question is uh, sure. what is the orbit? Orbit of equi bear one, equi bear one function. You have. But that orbit is compact, or what is the nature of the orb orbit that function? Oh, you mean compact? Fn? We don't yeah. know. There is see that's why that's why I was telling that you know like what the results of Zo uh, Piotr. It's important mm -hmm. because that shows that if a sequence is uh, x y b one, it has a convergence of sequence, which it means like some sort of sequentially compact. So right. therefore. If we based on his result, the Fn, if F the orbit, if N is equal bear one, yeah. What is the nature therefore of the it orbit? has a convergence, so it is it is sequentially compact then. Yes. Yeah, it is, should be compact. Okay. Yes, but it's based on his result. Based on his yeah, result. That, yes. that is I think so. It should be a compact. So I beg your pardon, uh, uh, I can find one more question the, that one participant is asking that is there any concept of equi B2? Yes, no, 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 no. So, well, no, 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 because there is not, as long as C, this epsilon delta definition for bare one, it puts that natural setting. And, and I was surprised, to be honest, I was surprised that in 20 years that that paper is out, has been out. Why someone, including myself, why we have been looking at this paper, using this paper, dealing with it, and not even thinking that. But unfortunately, because there is no epsilon delta definition, there is not nothing related to it. If, even for regarding a B1, these are new. So there is nothing no, related to B2. No, B1 and, is given by P.Y. Lee, Peng Lee. He's my friend. Yes, yes, yes. He's yes. several times. So yes, we have yes. a lot of paper. 
P Y yes. Lee has that is the giving the definition or epsilon the definition only bare one. Only not bare one. one. Only bare one. No, no, no. Only bare, bare one. one. And no, no, that no. There is nothing. Easy. Nothing is. Yeah. Yeah. That makes it easy. That that many people right now is working on ring up, but because the ring up continuous function has done by many authors, right? Now ring up right. function of bare one. Now many people are interested to doing ring up bare one function. Yeah. Right, right, right. So you cover a lot of things, lot of very lot of things. Really, <laughs> much. Well, I thanks, thanks, Ali. You. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for thanks the organizer for you know inviting me and give me the opportunity to be a part of this group. And you know that I love India. So this is uh, a country that. that I love. <laughs> yeah, a country that I love. Hopefully, you know, I'll be able to, you know, like to visit. But this is this is something that I'm I'm honored to be a part of the group. And you know, and so and thank you. Thanks for making this opportunity possible. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. And with this note, let us uh, conclude today's entire program. And uh, we will meet tomorrow. Uh, we will start the program at uh, the schedule has been sent to everyone, and we will start at exactly at 4 p.m. Indian Standard Time. And tomorrow we will be having two different lectures. Uh, first one will be provided by Dr. Krishna Dogongopadhyay, and next uh, we will start the next session. Uh, it will be provided by uh, Professor Shomiran Ghosh. So. The first lecture will be from four to five thirty. Then we will be having a thirty minutes break, and the next one will start at six, and it will end at seven thirty p.m. So thank you very much, and uh, thank you, sir, Professor Ali Khani, for your wonderful talk. Thank and you very much. Yeah, Ali. Thank you, Ali. You will send yes. your paper in my mail. Yes. Huh? Okay. Yes, yes, I will. I will send. Uh, I will yeah, send. I will. Yeah, I will so then. I will definitely send it, it to you. Uh, 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 topology and application. You have sent some papers. Okay. You, yeah. Okay. Okay. And I will. Sir, I will send you all those. Uh, please send the both the talk contains to us so that yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 